Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Tech Exceptions. And today we have an exceptional conversation with a unique guest from Redis Labs. And he's going to share with us how they're building Azure Redis Cache, how they are working together with Microsoft to bring this solution, and why do we even need this kind of new cache and new memory. Please welcome Erez Atiyah from Redis Labs. Hi, Erez. Hi. Hi, Eddie. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. I really like the guitars you have back back there. Oh, it's thank nice. you. Yeah, one is a ukulele, actually. That's cool. All right. So, what is Redis? Right. So, Redis is a super fast and simple in-memory data store. So, basically, uh, it started out as just a cache, and with the time, it evolved into more and more use cases, including even primary primary database. So. It, it's very friendly. It's very user friendly. Uh, developers really love it because it's simple and very performant. Actually, it, uh, it's the most loved database uh, for four years in a row now on Stack Overflow. Uh, it's open source. Uh, the development is led and sponsored by Redis Labs. And yeah, it's, it's a really nice data store. That's cool. What is it? By the way, you mentioned that you know Redis is an open source, and then Redis Lab sponsored the open source. What does it mean for a company to sponsor an open source? Right. So it basically means that uh, the the original developer who created Redis joined the company, and there's the core team, which is from Redis Labs, among other companies, which develop. Uh, which continue developing and maintaining Redis. And the core team is mostly in Redis Labs, and we lead the development. Hmm, That's really cool. So do you have a community, people from the community that support Redis that don't work for Redis Labs? Yeah, yeah, we do. The community is not just in Redis Labs. Uh, definitely, yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. So Redis is, like you mentioned, it's an in-memory uh, storage that we can use, in-memory database that we can use. But I'm thinking, you know, I'm coming from a traditional background of, you know, just databases that sits on on my normal disk. Why do I need in-memory storage now? Well, first and foremost is performance, right? So especially if you use uh, relational databases, they're most likely going to be considerably slower. And even uh, non-relational ones are still not going to be as fast as Redis, mostly because Redis sits in memory and also because it's just written very well and it's very performant. So that's the basic reason to use Redis, but it also has many other features uh, in addition to it. Cool. And I know, well, there's a lot of other features, and I know it's also allowing me to have a distributed database in memory. So it's not just, you know, what I'm holding in my RAM in one machine, I can actually hold this information on different machines, um, RAM memory, and kind of have a, a distributed database in memory, which gives me the ability to store much more data that I can uh, in only one machine. And also, um, maybe tweak it a little bit and define the machines that I want it to be uh, deployed so I can, sometimes uh, it can help me with being more cost efficient of all the workloads that I'm putting together because we are paying for compute and we're paying for the, these machines no matter where they are. If it's on the cloud, we're paying for usages. If it's on-prem, we're actually buying it every time and we need to uh, to buy more machines uh, once we, we reach the, the capacity. Uh, and I know also you work very closely uh, with Microsoft and you develop uh, a very unique um, service, first party service on, on Microsoft. So what are you building with Microsoft? I know Redis Labs, it's, it's not part of Microsoft, it's, it's a startup. So how, how it all connects. Right, so I'll start off by saying uh, you mentioned uh, the ability to use Redis uh, in a distributed manner. So. That's why we made Redis Enterprise. Redis Enterprise uh, lets you easily manage and scale uh, Redis clusters. Uh, the, the, the product sits behind a proxy. for So for most use cases, uh, a customer using Redis Enterprise will use it normally. There are exceptions, but mostly uh, it's mostly the same. And, and yeah, it just allows you to scale, just like you said, 
using lots of uh, uh, in-memory redises. And this is where the integration comes in. So we've been working in a while for on this integration with, with Azure. The idea of the integration is to allow customers to easily create and manage uh, fully managed Redis Enterprise databases on top of Azure. They can do this via UI or API. And, and yeah, that's, that's the main idea of this integration. That's what we're going to support. And customers will also be exposed to all the additional features of Redis Enterprise and Azure at the same time. So I know it's still in, in the works. It's not fully done yet, and you're still developing it. But I can uh, I can go and see it uh, on pre preview, uh, like different versions. So let's say I want to integrate Redis, uh, and I already have um, AKS Azure Kubernetes services, and you know a lot of uh, let's say event hubs, and a lot of already data services uh, that connects from messaging system to the infrastructure uh, to maybe. Uh, I can even use uh, Cosmos DB in that space, which is not in memory uh, database. It, it gives me a different uh, functionalities. So where exactly do I see um, your solution fits inside uh, my workload? Is it on top of AKS? Well, so it's a service on its own. Okay, so there's going to be uh, Azure Cache for Redis. There's the existing offerings. Uh, they're the existing basic standard and premium tiers. So we're going to add the enterprise and flash tiers and you can use them for, it doesn't have to be on top of your existing uh, deployment. You can pretty much use it for anything. You can use it as a cache. You can use it as a primary database. Uh, another very, very interesting use case is uh, active geo replication. So this is something supported by Redis Enterprise, which we will have on Azure Cache for Redis Enterprise in the near future. And basically it's based on a technology called CRDTs, which I think you've heard of. And it allows you to uh, have your application contacting this uh, geo-replicated database across different regions for better, uh, both better, availability and better performance. Hmm. Interesting. Is, is that exist? Is that feature, uh, you know, service that you're working on also exist in the open source version? No, no, that's something uh, developed by Redis Labs and it will exist on, uh, on the product we're working on in this integration. Okay, so this is a unique um, feature that people that use Redis Labs uh, on Azure with Microsoft can actually leverage and use. So, C and by the way, you mentioned CRDTs, and CRDTs are kind of a, a more advanced technology when we talk about uh, databases and and data uh, in general. So, how do you uh, how do you see it integrate in different uh, scenarios today? Right. So right now we have lots of use cases. One example is, is games, for example, you know, games require low latency. So, and then there's players all around the world. So there's different data centers and each data center, each server will need to query the database, which is closest to it while having consistency on the data eventually. So not only does this provide users the ability to have much higher availability in case one of the region has a catastrophe, uh, one of the regions. This also allows uh, servers across all over the world to, to, allow, to, to allow low latency and good performance. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, getting over different crises or anything that can happen, it's, uh, if something happens to a data center or some information is being lost, having the redundancy and the availability to kind of uh, make sure this data will be available in other regions as well. Uh, that's a really important feature. And you know what, let's go to the engineering part, to the software developer part. So I wanna start working uh, with your solution. Which programming language do I need? Well, there's SDKs for many languages. Uh, there's Python, there's Java, there's actually lots, I, I think 
most commonly used languages have uh, an SDK. So you can use whatever you want, basically. You will just have to go to the create a, a deployment via the UI or API, and you just connect to the endpoint, configure security, and you're in. That's cool. And in which language do you, do you use for you know creating the service? Right. So Redis itself is written mostly in C. Redis, Enter Redis Enterprise is written uh, mostly in Python. And well, the, the Azure side is written on C -sharp, in C Sharp. That's really cool. It's a nice combination between multiple languages. It has yeah. you know, nothing to do together, but you can actually, <laughs> you're putting everything together from C to Python to, to C Sharp. It's a, it's a very interesting combination. And I know, by the way, I noticed that uh, Redis was chosen to one of the most loved uh, open source. So congrats. It's, uh, it's exciting. You. It's definitely exciting. It means a lot of people use it, a lot of people care, and I'm sure you have uh, a wonderful and huge uh, community. Um, so last question. Um, how is it to work with the community, you know, with someone who, you know, is not working with you on a day-to-day -day job, but just doing it as a hobby? Right, so you can really see that people care about Redis. So, so I, I think it's really great, uh, people from, all over the world and try to do their best to create this uh, this product and make it the best they can. So yeah, it's it's really it's really nice to see, definitely. And the end product is is really great. So that just proves it. That's great. Well, I'm looking forward for your service to be finally uh, GA, global available, and open for everyone to use. It's definitely an interesting one that we see in the community. And thank you, Erez, for joining us today. Thank you very much, Adi. All right. Take care.